Good morning. We'll move to the next question, the numerical problem on pile foundations. You have a concrete pile, 45 cm diameter, which was driven into a depth of 16 meters of layered soil. Assuming delta as 75% of phi and k as 0.5 kp, water table is the ground level. You're asked to find the ultimate load. You can take NQ as a 95 neglect in gamma. The three layers are given in the question, layer 1, layer 2, and layer 3. Thicknesses are given 8, 6, and to a great extent. Dry unit weight is given in kilonewton per meter cube, 16.5, 15.5, and 16. Initial voids ratio is given 0 0.6, 0 0.65, and 0.65. Angle of internal friction or shearing resistance is given as 30, 35, and 38. Now, of course, this is not as simple as the previous two questions, but more of a practical line. You have three layers of soil, and the pile, which is 16 meters in length, passes through the three different layers. First layer is of the 8 meter thickness, second one 6 meter thickness, so that adds up to 14 meter, and the remaining 2 meter is inside the layer 3. So the end bearing is on layer 3. Skin friction it is distributed to layer 1, layer 2, and layer 3. And anyways, you will have to find the ultimate load. So QU is equal to QP plus QS. But QP, of course, is a point of the tip resistance at layer 3, which is QP into AP at layer 3. QS is a shaft resistance of layer 1, 2, and 3. So FS1, AS1, FS2, AS2 and FS3, AS3 combined. AP is of course the area of the pile tip. For 0.45 diameter, you have 0.159 meter square at pile tip. AS is pi DL, but not taken as a single unit. Instead, it is distributed for each layers. So for layer number one, you have to take the length of the layer number one. For layer number two, you'll have to take the corresponding value and the same applies for the layer number three. The diameter, of course, remains the same. We'll, to solve, we'll try to solve this in steps. What is given in the question is gamma D, voids ratio, and angle of internal friction. But the watt table is given to be at the ground level. So you have something like this. You have the pile, which is 16 meters long, installed in sandy soil, and the water table is at the ground level. You have three layers, one, two, and three, eight meters, six meter thicknesses. And the third layer, of course, extends to a greater depth, but what we are interested in is the remaining two meters. 0 0.45 meter is the diameter. <clears throat> now, before moving in depth into the question, I'll share a few tips on how to solve this, the flow, the scheme of things here. As a water table is at the ground level, you need to have the submerged unit weight into a calculation. You are not given the submerged unit weight, you are not given the saturated unit weight, instead you are given only the dry unit weight. Gamma D is the only thing given. So we need to arrive at gamma saturated and hence gamma submerged first. To get gamma submerged, we need gamma saturated and to get gamma saturated, you know an equation that we are all familiar with in geotechnical engineering one, the three phase system diagram says that gamma is equal to G plus SC by one plus E into gamma W. When you substitute S is equal to one or saturation 100%, you get gamma saturated as G plus E by one plus E. Where E is given in the question, gamma W is known, you can take that as 9.8 kilonewton per meter cube or approximately 10 but G is unknown, so you need G first, for which you are given gamma D. You are given gamma D, you know E and you know gamma W, so you can get G for each layer. So the story in short is like this, based on the E value and the gamma D value, the E value and the gamma D value, you estimate the G, the specific gravity of each layer. Based on G, E, and gamma W, you get saturated unit weight for each layer. 
Based on saturated unit weight, you get gamma dash or submerged unit weight for each layer. So once you know the submerged unit weights for each layer, you can find the effective stress sigma V and you can arrive at the end bearing and the skin friction, etc. So uh, find Z for each layer is our first task. I've represented this in a table, a tabular form like this. Thickness is given, gamma D is given, E is given, phi is given. So based on the previous equation, gamma D is Z plus CC by 1 plus A into gamma W where S is 0. So you can arrive at the G value for each layer and based on which you can arrive at the gamma saturated value and based on which you can arrive at the gamma submerged values. So uh, I'll go back to the previous slide. From gamma D and voids ratio you arrive at G. From G and voids ratio you arrive at gamma saturated and from gamma saturated you subtract gamma W and you get gamma dash. So this is everything that has to do with geotechnical engineering one in your KTU syllabus. Anyways, so I've represented that in a tabular form. Again, you can cross check the answers G, gamma saturated, and gamma dash. So QU, as we know, is QP plus QS. Again, QP is equal to QP AP at the third layer. So to get QP, you have gamma dash 1 D1 plus gamma dash 2 D2 plus gamma dash 3 D3 into NQ, right? Because quite similar to what we have discussed in the previous question, QP is the sum of CN, CNC plus gamma D of NQ plus half gamma B N gamma. Since this is pure sand, you can avoid, neglect the first term. CNC gets neglected. The third term, half gamma B N gamma also gets neglected. So what you are left with is a second term, gamma D of NQ, in which you have three different layers through which the pile passes. So you have gamma 1 dash D1 plus gamma 2 dash D2 plus gamma 3 dash D3 into NQ. Where D1, D2, D3 are the thicknesses 8, 6 and 2. Gamma dash is given or we have obtained the value of gamma dash is 10.36, 9.57 and 10.5. NQ is already given in the question. AP of course is a pile tip area which we know as 0.159. So solving you get QP or the end resistance or the tip resistance as 2423 kilonewtons. Now, though it looks simple, you have to do it on your calculator or as an Excel sheet if you're home and try to get and try to see if you're getting a similar answer. Uh, once you have arrived at QP, you need QS or the skin friction. For which, again, I've written it in a table format. Phi is given for each layer. You need to find Kp, which is 1 plus sine phi by 1 minus sine phi. And in the question, K is given as 0.5 Kp. So fundamentally, you find Kp for each layer and you find K for each layer. Kp, again, is 1 plus sine phi by 1 minus sine phi. For, for example, for the first layer, you take 1 plus sine 30 by 1 minus sine 30 and you get Kp multiplied by 0.5 and you get K. So I've listed it here and tan delta is already given the question delta. You'll, you'll have to take it 0.75 phi. So phi is already given. 75% of that is delta. Take the tan and you get this value. And sigma, the effective stress is gamma dash into d by 2 at the mid depth which means for each layer at the mid depth you estimate the gamma dash and d by 2 from which you get the sigma value so qu is equal to qp plus qs again qs equal to fs into as for layers 1 2 and 3 combined which is fs1 as1 fs2 as2 fs3 as3 combined where fs1 is a skin friction coefficient in layer 1, AS1 is a circumferential area in layer 1, likewise for the other two layers. For example, FS1 equal to K1, sigma V1, tan delta. K1 is this, sigma 1 is this, tan delta is this. So K1 is 1.5, sigma 1 is 41.4, tan delta 1 is 
0.414 and similarly you will get others fs2 fs3 etc so as1 as a circumferential area pi into 0.45 into 8 as2 is pi into 0.45 into 6 as3 is pi into 4.45 into 2 so what you get is 11.3 meter square, 8.4 centimeter square, and 2.83 meter square. So you have FS1, FS2, FS3, AS1, AS2, AS3, and you can add them together to get QS. So once you know QS and you know QP, you arrive at the ultimate loop, QU. If you try to solve this in a in a real classroom, it would probably take around 45 minutes. I used to take 45 minutes to, to, to explain this problem and solve it. And uh, since we are on the online platform now, I thought I'll switch to tabular form. But you'll have to work on your own. Try to solve this. Try to see if you're getting a similar answer. And though, it, though this question looks uh, simple in these areas, there's a bit of calculation involved in arriving at sigma for each layers. Anyways, try to solve it on your own and try to see if you are getting an answer somewhere around 40, let's say 4047 to 4060 based on the decimal values that you take and approximations that you make. Because there are a lot of approximations involved, there are a lot of decimal places involved. Everything gets reflected and added together and it might get reflected in your final answer but nonetheless just try to see if you're getting an answer somewhere around 4058 kilonewton